Hello dear listener, please subscribe to our channel. Enjoy watching. I met my wife a few years ago at a hospital where I went to visit my friend's wife who had just given birth. Coincidentally, she came in at the same time, but because my friend's wife was asleep, we had to wait in the lobby for about 40 minutes to an hour before she woke up. People who know me well know I am very extroverted, and I talk to strangers a lot. While waiting, I tried making jokes with the nurses at the reception desk, but they weren't having it. So, I went back to sit with my wife. I tried my best to keep my mouth shut, but we could tell that the silence was awkward, and the moment I started talking, we both burst into a loud laugh. I didn't know she had been observing me. She knew I would try to talk to her. From there, we talked for almost an hour until a nurse came to tell us my friend's wife was awake, and we both went in to see her and her baby. As much as I would love to mention my wife's name, so that people out there can stay away from her, I'd love to keep this anonymous in case any of her friends stumble upon this story. Before we left the hospital that day, I got my wife's number, and we started talking. I also followed her on Facebook, and we chatted there all the time. She was gorgeous, and I loved almost everything about her. At the time we met, she was working at a veterinary shop, and I worked for a construction company. We used to hang out whenever we were free, since we were both single, and slowly grew fond of each other. Point one of the reasons I loved my wife was that she was always seeking new ways to improve herself. She rented self-help books all the time and listened to all those personal development podcasts and the rest, honestly. She also helped me build the habit of reading books and trying to become better, which made me glad to have a partner who cared about my growth. Fast forward to some months later, we got so close, and we always told each other about what happened during work. Even without meeting my colleagues at work, she knew their names, roles, and everything that happened during work hours. The same applied to me, I knew everyone's name in the vet clinic she worked at, including the names of the animals that came in daily and those that returned. I was sure she was the one for me at that point, and I asked her out. When she said yes, I asked her to move in with me so we could begin to plan our lives and future together, and she did. She moved in with me, and we became a super couple. I loved her so much that I did everything for her. In fact, I didn't let her contribute to paying rent because I felt it was my responsibility to take care of her. I bought her whatever she wanted, and we went on many fancy dates together. Before I met my wife, I had been in three different relationships, but they all cheated on me, and none of my exes cared about me like my wife did. So, I believed she was the one for me. In less than three months of dating, I met her family, and she met mine too. Our families knew we were dating each other, and we were pretty serious too. So, after ten months of dating and living with each other, I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. Before we got married, we both agreed we would have kids after three years of being married so we could spend time with each other, do the things we loved, and not have to put our lives on hold. Most importantly, we would have saved enough money to give our children a comfortable life. A year after we got married, nothing changed, and everything was still beautiful and blissful, like when we were still dating. But things began to change between us after we celebrated our second year anniversary. My wife began to show less interest in the things she used to love, including our second anniversary, which she used to look forward to. That's when I began to suspect that something was wrong. It all started with her obsession with personal development and she claimed she found this new mentor online, a man in his late thirties who she asked to mentor her for a fee, and he agreed. According to my wife, this man was a life coach and he had mentored many people in the past and helped them build their lives. At first, I didn't have an issue with her having a mentor because I knew she wouldn't back down or change her mind until she got what she wanted. So, I allowed her to do her thing. However, a couple of weeks after she started her mentorship classes with him, I noticed they were getting closer and closer, and I kept feeling that something was off between them. But I shook it off. It wasn't enough that I was paying for the mentorship hourly, 
but she always came up with new excuses for me to pay for things I didn't understand. She met with her mentor almost every week and even had to cancel most of her lunch dates to be with him. Then, as if that wasn't enough, whenever I came home from work, I'd have to eat my dinner alone, watch television alone, and go to bed because she would talk to him for hours on the phone without spending time with me. I complained about it, but she said I was making a mountain out of a molehill, so I let it slide, expecting that she would change. But it got worse. Once we were supposed to go to my parents' house for my dad's 62nd birthday, but she didn't show up and refused to take my calls that evening. When I returned home, I found her and her mentor having dinner in her home, and I was so mad. When she saw me, she smiled and acted like everything was fine. It made me even angrier when I found out she forgot about her evil's birthday, even after I reminded her that morning. The craziest part was that we had not had dinner as a couple for weeks, and she even stopped cooking. But there she was, eating and laughing with her mentor. I got so mad and yelled at her. Then I asked her mentor to leave, but she stood up and started challenging me in front of her mentor. She said he had taught her a lot of things and he could not leave, so I had to choose between joining them for dinner or doing something else. I was so furious that I left the house and returned to spend the night at my parents' house. That night, I stayed away, close to my phone, hoping she would call and beg me, but she didn't. That was when I was forced to look up her mentor online. To my greatest surprise, I spent hours digging and could not find anything related to mentorship or personal development about him. When I was frustrated at finding nothing, I hired a private investigator to investigate him weeks after digging. The PI I hired discovered he was a convicted felon and a master manipulator with arrest warrants. I could not even believe it. The PI could not find anything related to mentorship with him. That's when I realized that my wife had been playing me for months. She was getting money from me and giving it to her lover as his payment while I worked my ass off to give her a better life. I collected all the evidence from my PI and paid him off. The next day, I went home early so I could meet my wife at home and show her all the evidence, but I caught them in the act on my couch, and I was enraged. I confronted him before I threw the evidence on the table, and my wife did not look surprised. It was an indication that she knew everything about him. She then started begging for forgiveness and asked me not to say anything. I told them I had contacted the police and she should go ahead and marry her lover and rot in jail for all I care. While I was yelling at them, the police arrived at my house and took him away immediately. After he was taken away, she went on her knees and began to beg me. She said he had manipulated her, but since he was out of the picture, we could return to how we were. Hearing that made me even angrier, so I kicked her out and called her parents to let them know their daughter would be coming home soon and we weren't together anymore. Months later, we divorced and went our separate ways, until the last six months. She kept calling me with different numbers until I warned her that we could never be together, even if it were in her next life. Of course, I miss her, but being single is way better than living with a cheating spouse. Even the last few months of our marriage were hell for me, so I'm glad I made the right decision. Op. I wonder why you didn't look up your wife's mentor before she started her mentorship classes. That was carelessness on your part. It's just terrible that she played you and manipulated you to pay for classes that did not exist. Although it's hard, you made the right decision by kicking her out of your house and divorcing her. Such a woman does not deserve second chances because she would have cheated on you again even if you forgave her. It's even more disturbing that she didn't show any remorse when you showed her the pieces of evidence. But most importantly, she is no longer in your life. Thank you for sharing with us. Story 2. My wife and I fell apart after two years of marriage. We started dating around 2020 after the coronavirus pandemic struck the world. She had lost her family of three to the virus and as her closest family friend. I had no other option than to take her in. I lived in a two-bedroom apartment. One was my bedroom, 
and the other was my office because I was already working remotely for a top freelancing platform, whose name I would be withholding. I had to move my office to my bedroom so she could sleep in the second room. When she moved in, she was grieving, always moody, and almost depressed. I took up the responsibility of caring for her. At that time, I was earning very well, so I didn't need her to contribute to anything, not even groceries. She barely ate and was not herself for the first few months. Point seven months later, she snapped out of her morning state and became active again. She started looking for a job, mainly because she wanted to pay me back for all the things I had done for her. But when I found out, I stopped her from working and suggested that she learn a high-demand skill so she could register on the same platform I worked at and also earn remotely. She agreed, and I paid for an expensive course for her. She mastered the skill in the following months, registered on the platform, and began to get her own clients. That's how we became two remote workers living together when my wife moved in with me after she lost her parents. I had just broken up from a toxic relationship and the last thing I wanted was a relationship. But having my wife in the house all the time helped me in some way and caused me to re-evaluate the important things in life. In the process of her living with me, I fell in love with her even without knowing. With her becoming active again, our relationship grew stronger and we even became closer. I became her only friend and family. Slowly, we started doing things only couples do. We went on vacations together because we were both financially stable, got each other gifts, visited the places we always wanted to, and even took more advanced courses to help us in our skills. After living together for two years, the neighbours and those who stayed or worked around our house knew we were together, even when I had not officially asked her out yet. I knew she loved me, but I was afraid she would turn me down because she kept saying she was tired of people coming into her life and leaving her when she needed them the most. So, I kept procrastinating. Eventually, I asked her out on her 27th birthday. We weren't doing anything extravagant that year, we just went to have a fancy dinner. While we were in the restaurant, I paid the waiter to bring in a cake I had delivered some hours before we went there. Instead of saying happy birthday, it had will you be my girlfriend written on it. She said yes with excitement. Initially, I had intended to propose to her, but I wanted to officially ask her out first point four months later. After she said yes to me, I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. My parents already knew her because her late family and my family were friends and they were delighted when they found out we were getting married. We made the wedding plans and had a small wedding. Then, we moved into a bigger apartment with enough space for our respective workspaces. When we moved into this new apartment, my wife was jovial and always in high spirits with the neighbours. The neighbours were receptive and welcoming, unlike my former neighbours, who were always busy and barely had time to speak or talk with us for more than five minutes. This made me happy because she had a different happiness spending time with the neighbours, especially since she had lost her family and barely interacted with others except my family and me. She even started cooking and sharing food with the neighbours and their kids, which contributed to their closeness. Being remote work has allowed us to create our own work timetables. Whenever she was done working, she would go grocery shopping and come back home to cook. She claimed that cooking helped her clear her head and that sharing food with other people reminded her of her family reunions and much more. I understood her point of view, so I didn't argue with her or try to stop her, even when some of the neighbours started taking advantage of her kind gestures. Aside from the food, some neighbours began to ask for financial assistance, which we helped with whenever we could. There was also an 80-year-old man who asked if she could help him cook on some evenings and clean his house too since he had no family, living with him. When my wife told me about it, I reluctantly agreed, and she would go over to his house two or three times a week to cook and clean. About a month after she started cooking and cleaning for him, I noticed she went there almost every evening, except on weekends. This was more often than their initial agreement, but I thought everything was okay. Then one day, 
I was in my apartment watching television when I heard a knock on the door. I knew it was unlike my wife to knock when she had her keys. So, I opened the door and realized it was our neighbor for whom she cooked. When I saw him, I thought he had come to thank us for her help, but he looked somewhat disturbed. When he sat down, I asked him if everything was okay. At first, he said, son, I want your wife to stop coming over to my house because she is having an affair with my renter. Then he stopped and looked at me. I was shocked to hear that and didn't know what to say. I asked him if he was telling the truth and he admitted that he had no reason to lie during our discussion in my apartment. My wife had gone grocery shopping to prepare a meal for the next day, so she wasn't at home. I didn't want to believe the old man, but as he said, he had no reason to lie and it made no sense for him to lie about my wife. In the end, I asked him if he could show me something to prove that he was telling the truth and he promised to make a video and send it to me when she visited his house for the last time that evening when my wife came back home. I didn't mention anything to her. I just acted like everything was fine and didn't say that the old man had come over when she was away. The next evening, she told me she was going there as usual, and I pretended not to pay any attention and acted like I was engrossed with my work. About 15 minutes after she left, the old man sent me a video of my wife in his renter's room, and they were making out in the living room, thinking he was asleep in his room. When I saw the video, I was devastated. I knew the man she was kissing, and I could not believe she had done that to me. I thanked the old man and told him I'd be locking her out of the house, and he promised to do the same because his renter was late on rent payment and he had had enough of him. Later that evening, when my wife came home and couldn't access the house, she started to yell and hit the door. I sent her the same video, and she began to beg me from outside. She asked me to open the door to discuss things, but I was done with her. She had betrayed me and did not care about my feelings. On the other end, her lover was kicked out by the old man, and they were both homeless that evening. I refused to let her in that night and after a few days, she returned to find her stuff packed in one corner of the house. But she refused to leave, so I called the police because she was disturbing my peace and the neighbor's peace. She was taken away, and about two months later, I divorced her. She cried bitterly and tried to emotionally blackmail me into staying with her, but I had had enough of her nonsense. She said something about me being the only person she had left in the world, but I reminded her that she had her lover now. I cut all ties with her. It turned out that her lover was an illegal immigrant, and he fled the country when I threatened to have him arrested on the day my wife came to pick up her things. In the end, he left her, and she had no one else to turn to. It's been a couple of months, and I still feel stupid for being played like that, but I'm way better now. I don't think I'll be ready to be in a relationship anytime soon. Op, you ended up with bad people in the past and they took your love for granted. You should even be glad that your wife eventually showed her true colors early in the marriage and didn't lead you on for years. It would have been more heartbreaking with time. Consider yourself lucky to have a nice neighbor who could not watch your wife cheat on you. I know you did a lot for her, but this has nothing to do with you being at fault. I'm glad you made the right decision. Wish you all the best going forward. Story 3. My girlfriend and I were together for five years, living together the whole time. She needed somewhere to go when we met, so she moved in as my roommate for a few days. But then we slept together, and our relationship began. We both enjoyed going for walks, having friends over for board games, and volunteering at a local stable that offered therapeutic riding. A lot of our time was spent there, working together. At least once a week, we took our basset hound on our memorized hiking trail through the valley and over the mountains. Over the years, we formed a close bond and enjoyed living with each other. I was thankful that starting a romance with my roommate didn't come back to haunt me, but I wasn't considering the possibility of change at the time. I felt like we could always stay like this, she started to get restless, though. 
It seemed like her head was in the clouds because she started talking about getting a van and traveling across the country. We didn't have the money to do that without dipping into our hard-earned savings and without staying to work. We'd fall behind on our bills. When I told her this, she suggested we sublet our apartment. She wouldn't let go of the idea, even though I didn't like it. I didn't trust a stranger to stay in our home, keep it nice, pay us, and leave whenever we got back. It just felt like something was going to go wrong unbeknownst to me, my girlfriend arranged to meet a potential subletter. She met him without me, for God knows how long, while I was at work. They met alone in the apartment. When she told me this, I was furious. I told her she was lucky he didn't try anything while I wasn't there. How stupid do you have to be to meet a stranger in your home without your spouse there? She swore nothing weird or bad happened, and he seemed like a responsible, honest guy. He even worked in the same building as her. I couldn't believe this, but I decided to go along with my girlfriend. She wanted us to buy a van and go on a trip so badly, it was like her life depended on IT.SO. I got off work early one day and bought a van for us. I got her flowers and a card that basically said she could tell the subletter to move in and I'd love nothing more than to travel with her. As I drove through the parking lot, I saw her leaving the rental office with a man I assumed to be the subletter. They were smiling ear to ear and then kissed passionately. I had to jerk the wheel to avoid clipping a parked car. This was supposed to be our subletter and I just caught my girlfriend kissing him. I hadn't even told her I was ready to do this, she just went ahead and did it anyway. I was furious and shaking when I got out of the van, holding the flowers and card carelessly. My girlfriend noticed me, and her face went from pleased and happy to scared. She rushed over to me, asking if this was our new van. One look at AP, the guy she was kissing, and I instantly got the feeling that he thought too highly of himself, had a lot of money and didn't care that he was kissing my woman and intruding on my life. I told her it was my new van because I just saw her kissing our subletter. AP gave us space while she tried to downplay what I just saw. I told her there was no excuse for it and threw the flowers and card at her. She picked it up, started reading it, and then sobbing. It was like the card, the van, and me standing in front of her snapped her out of whatever delusion she was feeding herself. She said she didn't know what came over her, she just wanted to travel with me and make the subletter official. I mocked her for sounding like an idiot, saying that's all she wanted, and she met him alone in our apartment twice, and I caught them kissing. In so many words, I dumped her. We fought back and forth while AP sat in his car, but I don't remember what we said. I just remember how betrayed I felt. My girlfriend got smart with me when she realized I wouldn't forgive her for this. She said she didn't have to leave because her name was on the lease, but that she would give me some space to get over what just happened. I watched her get into AP's car and leave. I went inside the apartment in some kind of zombie like trance and felt like it belonged to someone else. I didn't want to be here anymore and I couldn't stay with my girlfriend after how she just defended herself for seeing another man. I looked at the van I had just bought and decided what I was going to do. I packed all my stuff, everything, and fit it into the van. I divided it into my essentials, stuff to sell, and stuff to keep. I put my apartment key under the mat, carried my basset hound to the van, and left point two weeks later. I remembered my ex saying that AP worked in the same building as her. It wasn't hard to find the information I needed and send an email to my ex's boss. She replied less than a week later, thanking me for bringing this violation of company policy to her attention. AP and my ex were fired for dating in the workplace. She tried calling me and texting me pitiful cheater words, but I know she was just one of the many people I'm destined to meet. She wasn't even mad at me for getting her fired, she just wanted me to come home. As much as her betrayal hurt, she was the one that encouraged me to buy the van and travel. I hope anybody reading my story doesn't let anyone or anything hold them back from being happy or content with life. Op, 
It seems like your girlfriend started this whole thing because she was restless and obviously going through something, but she never tried to talk to you about the root of her problems. Maybe you both could have had the opportunity to repair the relationship if she had a little self-control, respect, and patience until you guys got out on the road. As devastating as this was, she proved that she could not control herself or be the woman you needed her to be. Talking things out could have been the way to save this relationship, but it takes two mature people to do that. Starting a secret relationship to fix whatever you're feeling is not the way to resolve issues. The best thing anyone can do is talk to their spouse honestly. The person they should count on more than anyone else. I wish you all the best and hope you can recover from this. Story 4. My wife, 35, female, and I, 38, male, were married for three years. Our marriage was greatly influenced by our parents. Her parents were desperate for grandchildren, so seeing as she was their only child and she never had a long-term boyfriend, they took matters into their own hands. They knew my parents from church, and my parents were also growing impatient with me. I hadn't had a girlfriend for longer than a year, and I never considered having children with anyone. My parents were getting old, watching the clock tick by when they were approached by my future in-laws. The four of them arranged a blind date for us, she was pretty heavyset, but I wasn't one to judge based on appearances. It was pretty clear that she had self-confidence issues and didn't expect to get married. She was brutally honest on our first date and didn't bother trying to hide who she was. I admired her for that. She actually shared a lot of the same opinions and beliefs as me. I started to wonder if all either of us needed was a partner to go through life with. I asked her what she'd want to do together if we started seeing each other. She said she loved to paint, so that became her hobby. Just a month later, our parents planned our wedding. Our relationship wasn't bad, but I hardly knew her, so I guess I should have stopped it. I just wanted to make everyone else happy. I made it my personal goal to build my wife's confidence and better our lives together. I wasn't in shape either, so I thought it would be great for us to start active hobbies together. We bought bikes, but she only went on a couple of rides with me before making excuses every time. She said her knees hurt. We started walking around our neighborhood, but she got sunburned once, so she stopped going out on sunny days. Three years later, we were still together. I could tell that we both changed in some good ways, but I admit I could only handle a few hours at a time with her before I started to feel weird. She made me feel like what I said was a waste of time, and whatever I suggested we do together was lame. When she told me she was joining a yoga class, I was skeptical. She said it was the perfect way for her to get in shape. I asked if I could do it with her, and she hesitated before saying no. She wanted this to be her time to think and work on herself. I arranged for a friend of mine to wait in our neighborhood for my wife to leave, so he could follow her. He called me when they got to a cafe. My wife was meeting a man over coffee. From what he could tell, it seemed like this was their first date. I was nauseous. What I worried about for so long was becoming reality. This whole marriage was a terrible idea. I decided not to confront her that night. My friend sent me a picture of them sitting at a table. I just plugged in my phone and went to sleep. For days later, I told my wife I was going to work at the same time as her yoga class, but I just parked my car down the street to get into my friend's car. We followed her at a distance until she got to the bowling alley. She greeted AP with a kiss on the lips. I was shocked to see her this way. She was wearing a flirty dress, and I could tell she had gained confidence since we first met, probably because of my emotional support and love. Yet here she was using her newfound confidence to kiss and date another man.my friend, and I jumped out of the car to confront them. She stopped kissing him and turned her head to see me. She started hyperventilating and got defensive as she accused me of following her. I think she was just extremely remorseful and embarrassed. I think our marriage meant more to her than she cared to admit because it would have made the moment unbearably painful. 
I just told her she was cheating on me, so we were over. It sounded weird because I couldn't think straight. She just went inside with AP and got in line to get bowling shoes. She was trying to make it seem like nothing happened. Dot, that's when I got angry. I trusted her and accepted her as my wife, even though I was scared I'd get my heart broken. And now she was pretending she didn't do anything wrong. My friend and I started a game in the bowling lane beside theirs. I made it extremely awkward for them by staring as they bowled like idiots. I couldn't decide what to do, so I just did the first thing that came to mind. I ordered nachos and threw them on my ex's head. She screamed and whined, and bowlers around us were very amused. AP told my nacho-covered ex that he was going to see other people and left. It was extremely satisfying to follow my friend out of there without regard to my ex getting the cheese out of her hair that I filed for divorce. And it was a nightmare for our parents. I felt worse for them than myself, but I was glad we didn't have kids together. She tried calling me and even talking to me in person, even though she said extremely intimate and honest things, like giving me credit for her maturity and growth. It didn't matter to me. She still had growing up to do because she cheated on me. I did what I could for her, but I wanted the opportunity to meet someone else. It's been years since this happened and I'm happy to say that I'm married and have children with my new wife. My parents are happy grandparents, and I have a wife I can be proud of. Op, the only reason she started seeing and kissing another man is that she was selfish. She didn't consider how you would feel or the fact that you were her husband. You were the one who encouraged her and helped to build her self-confidence. As soon as she grew bored with the relationship, she sought out someone to cheat on you with instead of talking to you about how she felt. I'm glad to hear that you've had children with your new wife, and your parents are happy. Their intentions were pure, but the woman they encouraged you to marry didn't take you or herself seriously. If you enjoyed this story, please like and leave a comment. It's important for us and will help promote this video. Thank you for watching us.